right, brother, welcome to the podcast, Stop Crying Poser, greatest podcast known to man, as voted by Keenan, Kel, Kegel, and Frank. Those guys, they know their podcasts. Shout out to everyone who tuned in here live. Paul Miranda, Sharky Genie Scrambles, Keith Skates, Day Day, Bitcoin or Die, Infamy, and whoever else might be lurking. I appreciate the hell yes. Today is Friday. We do this podcast every single Friday right around 3.30 p.m. Pacific time. Although right now it's 4.06 and you are watching right now on twitch.tv slash Ninja Lifestyle. I have a lot of topics, but a lot of them are kind of short topics. But before we do that, I would love to give you guys the opportunity to win a free Ninja Lifestyle sticker pack if you live in America. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds fun, doesn't it? Oh boy, I would love to win a free Ninja Lifestyle sticker pack. Well, it's not really free because you have to answer the question correctly. That's what you pay. So this is the question. (laughs) Uh, Coolio, the album Gangsta's Paradise and the number one hit single Gangsta's Paradise. The, uh, The music video was based around what? 1995 American film drama directed by John N. Smith. Um, What was the movie? All right. The music video was all about a movie. The movie was about, uh, you know, somebody who went to go save the classroom. What what is it about? Somebody took up a teaching position and all the students were fucking super ghetto. And then uh, they're all like segregated. And then she makes them all work as a, as a team. It's kind of like a ripoff of uh, Freedom. Was it Freedom Riders? Wasn't there one like that? Sounds dangerous. Yeah, I I also remember I have a DVD of a movie called High School High, which was basically just making fun of all these 90s movies that were all about, like, teachers going to these ghetto schools. And it's like the, uh, the scary movie version, like that style of comedy. And then also, you guys remember that on South Park, Cartman pretty much did his own version of that. So all you'd have to do is watch the goddamn music video for Gangsta's Paradise and look that it's just this one actress who plays in this one movie, 1995 American drama. Oh my God, no one's gonna get this one? You guys are welcome to Google it. I can't believe that we have to go through this, man. So, um, also, if you do win... I go through this. I used to complain about this a lot more often, but then people got smart and now people are going back into their stupid ways. You got to you got to keep them you got to keep them on their on their toes. I want to remind everyone that when I say send me your address, your address has to be like certain pieces of information, right? Number 1, knowing what state you live in would be nice. So when I ask for your address, and you just send me uh, 1301 of uh, North Main. And I go, oh, like, maybe, maybe, the, maybe the city, state, zip code, and may, maybe your actual real name, okay? Because I don't really, really, really want to write fucking blowjob 420 boy at the top of my letter. So maybe I just want to remind you guys how addresses work. They, uh, they start with a name, and then it's like the street number and then your street name. And then your city, and then your state, and then your zip code. That's that's typically how I would do it. But I don't know. I don't know. I used to go through this all the time. We used to do giveaways for a lot of skateboarding pro- products. And yeah, like Keith says, they'll just be like, it's the greenhouse on Main Street. I'm like, dude. <laughs> I don't know how to explain this. Like, you're old enough to be here, right? You're old enough to be on here typing, chatting. You can spell. I need you guys to figure it out. Also, no one got the fucking trivia question right, so um, I I don't I don't know what to tell you. Oh, Paul Miranda got it. Paul Miranda got it. He cheated though. No, you, you cheating's allowed. If you didn't cheat, you didn't try. How do I reach these kids? Yeah, Paul, you're the winner. Send me your address, unless you don't live in America, in which case you can pick an American in the chat room to give the prize away to. So send me that in DM or on Discord or whatever. Do what you gotta do. Wow, we're already fucking a minute and a half into this podcast, and I'm still trying to figure out how to teach people how to know their own address. Uh, it's been it's been an eventful week for me. I tell you guys this all the time. I I got one day behind for my 
like I kind of make my own schedule, right? Like uh, Monday is for ninja review, filming and editing. Tuesday is for skating, uh, trying to edit that. Wednesday is for uploading and doing thumbnails. Thursday is for whatever extra shit. And then Friday we do the live podcast. Saturday and Sunday is when things get uploaded. So I, I kind of try to keep that tight, but I got one day behind this week and it, it killed me, dude, just because I get overwhelmed so easily. So I felt like I was just like rushing all week, even though in reality, in reality, I, I, in reality, like if I tell you guys the truth, I probably do like of, of work of like YouTube work. It's probably like four and a half hours of work. So the 40 hour work week is out the window. But then if you add on time spent on Twitch and the uh and the working on youtube it kind of adds up to like me almost having a job unfortunately amaranth is out there taking all the goddamn money somehow so i don't know i don't know how i should get in on that i gotta start licking some ears or something but it's been a busy week and let me explain to you guys some traumatic oh my goodness a traumatic experience i had to encounter this week and it still weighs on me today you know what trauma is when like you when you like you you remain it, it affects you in the future, right? You're always afraid of something or or you're just affected in some way. That's me. So let me explain. The other evening, I go to bed, I'm having a wonderful dream and I wake up and then I'm having a nightmare. I wake up, I go, "Oh my god, I'm glad that nightmare is over." Right? I go, "Oh, I got a pee pee really bad." I look down at my dick, it looks up at me, it goes, "I got a piss." I go, "Oh fuck." It's like it's like seven in the morning, right? The dog's trying to sleep. I fucking run to the bathroom. I really got to go really bad. I look down, I see a cockroach. I go, oh, fuck. Every once in a while during summer, a cockroach will come under the drain. It will come out of my out of my shower drain. And then it will just wander around the bathroom. And there's like, I spray d death bug spray into the drain. So when they come out, they usually die pretty quickly. They don't have much energy left. So I look down, I see this cockroach, I go, oh, fuck, did I hate that cockroach? And I say, you know what? He's on the verge of dying. Let me see if I can get this PP done because my stomach is hurting. It's exploding my belly right now. Let me sit down and pee, and then, uh, then I'll kill him in a minute. I sit down, I look to my right, I see another one. I go, oh, fuck, it's a goddamn mutiny. It's a, it's a whole party now. It's a two-on-one situation. So I, I rush this pee out. I squeeze it out as hard as I can. I probably have fucking bladder cancer now because I fucking pissed so hard. And then uh, I go for the one. I go for the one. I try to spray him first so to weaken him. And then I spray him. He goes under the door. And I go, oh, my God, he's escaped into the room. Usually the door is it's, it's pretty good, like, distance from the ground. So usually they can't, they can't go under. This guy squeezed under. And I look to my right. I go, well, this guy's... The second cockroach number two looks incapacitated. Okay, he's on the right. My other one's on the left. Stomach's hurting. I go, you know what? I got to take, I got to I gotta begin the chase. I go over there. I chase him. I find him under the bed. I go, I can't reach him. I'm using like a stick to get him under the bed. Finally get him. Crush him in my hand. I crushed him. His little exoskeleton exploded. I throw him in the toilet, and I go, where's the second one? Now, mind you, the second one was in a corner. There's no wall. There's no... <laughs> Sorry. I'm laughing at Scramble's stupid-ass comment. Uh, I should have named them Keenan and Kel. <laughs> so I go, the second one, he was in a corner, right? There's a ground to a corner. There's nowhere he could have gone. No holes, no drain, nothing to go under. Nothing to go into. I look back. He's gone. I look around the bathroom. I look under the toilet paper. He's not there. I look behind the toilet. I look under the door. I look in the sink. I, now I start looking up. I start looking behind me. Like in like there's these little curtains in there. I start looking above, below. I don't know where he went. He completely disappeared. And there's nothing. There's nothing that makes me feel more anxious than having a cockroach on the loose. And I know here, the only thing that gives me a little bit of comfort is knowing that he died shortly after that because there's no way that he could have survived my, my poison, my poison shower blockage. But to know that he got out of my clutches and he's somewhere either in the bathroom or in my room where I sleep, it's devastating. It's devastating to know. 
I, I imagine it's like what happens when you leave one of your comrades on the battlefield, except the opposite. But the same amount of the same amount of sadness. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I just compared. You just compared me killing a cockroach to to uh, w war, <laughs> to <laughs> shit that war veterans experience. Um, just a bad look, dude. The fucking cockroach. And I know I sprayed a bunch more in the drain. Somebody was like, "You should get traps." I was like, "Oh, traps!" Like. I feel like traps lure them in. If I put a cockroach trap in my house, it's gonna lure the cockroach in so that he dies. Now he's dying indoors of, of, of my house. My house has really good like ceiling. There's no holes on the outside. Um, I don't know where that sewer goes. I don't, if I could, I would get it at the source. I think that sewer goes into the street. I don't know if I have access to, to that, that line of, um, of, of drain. I would love to go to wherever they're coming from and just drench it in poison, but I don't know. I don't know how to do it. They keep coming out, though. They, they, I get about one every two weeks. One will pop out, and every once in a while, one of these motherfuckers will, will take flight. They've evolved now. They're like, um, you know, I don't know, fucking like bats. They're, like, they're, they're big, bro. They're, they're like this fucking big. They're as big as like, okay, what, what? They're like as big as a Pringle. I'm not fucking kidding you, man. These fuckers are humongous. That's why I was surprised when this, this fucking Pringle slithered under the door. Jesus, man. I hate fucking... I hate those things, dude. It's like when I grab them, they're so strong. I grab them inside of like a bunch of paper towels. And I can feel them like bench pressing my hand off of them. And then when I crush them, it's like I crushed a little bodybuilder. Which is, doesn't bother me, but it's, it's, it's icky. Okay? It's icky. And I know what they crawled through. They crawled through the fucking, the, 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 the same shit that Mr. Dufresne crawled through in the Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, motherfucker, these things. Okay, and not about cockroaches, man. It's cre creeping me out. Just thinking about it. I hate that shit. Um, <laughs> I'm funny today, man. I'm on a roll. I watched a couple of movies. Let's get those out of the way. I watched a movie called We Die Young. We Die Young is a Netflix movie, I guess. <laughs> I guess? It's not good. Not a good movie. Dialogue, horrible. Acting, horrible. It's like a Mexican gang movie about like MS-13. And this kid tries to get out of the gang, but he can't. And he has to deliver some drugs or something. It was terrible. Um, I love like gangster movies like that. I love prison movies. Everybody in this movie had like some gnarly like prison tattoos. And I was like, oh, this is kind of like, you know, it makes you feel like you're there. Like, oh shit, like these are some... Some super, like, gang member, like, dudes. And then you, the more you watch it, you're like, man, this acting is fucking terrible. The dialogue is terrible. Oh, the main star is, like, a kid. He's, like, a teenager. And he's, like, saving his younger brother from, like, the gang life. And then it's it's just, like, the way they talk to each other is not the way, like, a brother would talk to another brother. It's just bad. It's, it's, I feel like half of the movie was just improv They're, like... They're like, hey, yeah, you have to get him out of this situation, so uh, come up with some lines. And he's like, oh, uh, okay. Come on, man. Come on. We got to go. Come on. Come on. I don't want you in the gang. Come on. We got to get you out of the gang. Come on. Let's go. I don't want you in the gang, man. You're not supposed to be in the gang. You're getting good at baseball, even though you're only fucking eight years old. And you're, you're, we can't have you in the gang, man. Come on. We got to get out of here. We got to get out of this. You don't want to be in the gang. Did I did I do that for too long? <laughs> oh, well, it's it's because that's what the movie was. It was every 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 conversation went on for too long. It was like they were trying to get that minimum amount of words for their essay. <laughs> for their essay, get it? Essay. <laughs> I'm killing it. I'm killing it today. Oh, damn, I'm killing it today, dude. Okay, the movie's called We Die Young. You should avoid it. Speaking of young actors, I started watching Stranger Things. I watched five episodes, which took up like four hours. And speaking of kids who can act pretty good, it it doesn't surprise me why that show is so popular. Now, as far as like magical bullshit and monsters and f magical, just a bunch of bullshit, like magical lights going off. I don't care about that. Like, that's pretty lame. Okay, but I will give credit where it's due. The acting and the dialogue in Stranger Things is pretty good. It's pretty good. I, I still don't know what the fuck is going on. I feel like uh, 
I feel like I'm in a small town with a bunch of weirdos, but Stranger Things, if you guys have watched it, then whatever. The, the reason I wanted to watch it, because everyone's fucking losing their mind over the new Stranger Things thing is coming out. The new uh, season's coming out. Oh boy, the new fucking season. Oh boy, the new season. So I put on Twitter, I was like, can I just watch the new season or do I have to watch all of them? And they're like, you have to watch them all. So I, st I have about, what, 30 straight hours of Stranger Things to watch. I think I can knock it out maybe an hour a day. Or maybe two hours a day. Um, just because I, I want to see what all the hype is about. And I, I can see why it took off. But let's let's be real. It's no Breaking Bad, okay? It, it's, it's, it's not going to be. Like, you know what it is for me? And one of the reasons I've never watched Harry Potter is because I don't care about magical bullshit. You know? I just don't. Same reason I can't watch movies about, like, alien abductions. Not that I'm saying that they're not real. But, like... I just can't watch a movie about magical bullshit, okay? Uh, say, same goes for the scary movies. I feel like this Jason, uh, I almost said Jason Bourne, you know, that, that horror movie, Jason Bourne. I feel like this movie with Jason and Freddy, oh, I'm getting into your dreams, magical bullshit. Oh, I, got, I can get shot 500 times and still walk with an ax, magical bullshit. Oh, I can survive a fire and I've been killed 14 times over the course of 22 movies, magical bullshit. That's the way I put it. Oh, but, uh, you know what? As far as, like, production value, it's really well done. So I'm, I'm on board. So now that I've watched five episodes, I have to watch the rest of it. Another movie I watched was Hurt Locker. I watch this movie about once a year, so it wouldn't surprise me if I've talked about this on stream before. Hurt Locker is like a, uh, a war movie about a guy who defuses bombs and he's kind of like a dickhead. He's a dick to everybody. He work. He does not work well with others, but he's really good at uh, at defusing these bombs. And it's really worth watching. I think it's a great movie. I think the guy in it is. Uh, oh, I hope I don't get the name wrong. I think Jeremy Renner. Oh, I'm probably getting the name wrong. God damn it. Anyways, I have not seen Top Gun yet. I want to go see it. I've heard good things. Okay. Top Gun for me is one of those movies where I would I should go back and rewatch it because it seems corny to me. I feel like it it just seemed corny. I also rewatched Independence Day. Oh my god, that movie's fucking terrible. I'm wearing an Independence Day shirt right now. Never forget. But that movie is fucking terrible. Especially the guy that plays the president. Oh my god, everything he says. Did I talk about this last week? I think I did. It's it, that's how bad it is. What else happened in my uh, in my life? Uh, I went downtown last Friday, and I saw the guy who got famous for saying "D's nuts." He's uh, <laughs> it's it's gonna be if if I was trying to explain this to an alien or somebody in another country, it, this this would be so hard to explain. So there is a viral internet video of this guy going, <laughs> "Somebody was on the phone for you. Who was it? D's nuts." Ha, got him. The guy said those words, but he also is not, he's not a, not a good looking fella. So, uh, that guy got weirdly popular online for a while, somehow, and I saw him on the streets of Fremont, and usually when I see him in a viral video now, it's him getting beat up, uh, on that very same, on that very same stretch of road where I saw him, and, uh, my first thought was I should take a picture with him, and my second thought was, no, I've heard he's a dick. And then my third thought was, this guy's not fucking famous. You know what I mean? Now, that's, that's big of me to say. The internet skateboarder doesn't think that the fucking internet comedian's famous. I think it's just, uh, I think it's just not interesting. Well, I'm going to take a picture, then what? I go on Instagram and say, hey, I took a picture with this guy. And then people go, oh, that guy. And then life goes on. I'd much rather take a picture of some food. Am I being crazy? I think that, eh. I think nothing good was going to come from that. But I saw the guy, and now I'm talking about it. So you know what? He is he is famous enough for me to talk about. So you know what? I just I just uh, contradicted myself. Uh, Bitcoin says, why do they beat him up? They beat him up, I believe, because he's a dick. And number two, I believe that if you ask to take a picture with him, he asks you for money. I can see a group of people saying, hey, there's that guy. And then he says, I'm not taking a picture unless it's five bucks. And they say, dude, are you fucking stupid? Are you crazy? And then he goes, bitch, five bucks. And then they probably beat him up. 
<laughs> I don't know if that's what happened, but that's what I picture happening. Uh, what else happened in my life? My car brake light went out, but it wasn't my brake light. It was my running light. So it's it's the same bulb, but the bulb comes on when your brakes go on, and then it gets bright. And then when you turn your lights on just to drive at night, the red light comes on like a little dimmer. I found out only today, and I'm only t telling the story to inform you guys. I found out that these brake lights, they have two circuits in them. They have like a, like a bright and a less bright, but it's the same bulb. So when one goes out, it'll work sometimes. My brake light would still work, but my running light would not work. First, I thought maybe it's a fuse. So I stupidly went and bought fuses. Then I thought to myself, it was a, if it was a fuse, both lights would be out. Like, why, why, why did I think that? What, what would make me think that was the issue? I don't know. I think I just got in my head. $7 down the drain, but now I have backup fuses for, uh, for big things that go out. So if one day my car doesn't start and I have a starter fuse out, I could fix that, which my buddy just did. I, I had his car at my house for nine days. Anyways, long story short, uh, if you're having any problems with your, with your brake light, change the bulb. Even though it's a brand new bulb, doesn't matter. Change it. Now it works great. Okay, that's the end. My God. I, I just feel dumb about I feel dumb about thinking it was a fuse issue. Because if it was a fuse issue, I would have had so many more problems. What am I, stupid? Why I ought to... Whatever. Uh, I have a moral issue. I have a moral thing to talk to you guys about. To ask you guys about. Um, so, I watched this terrible video of somebody falling off of a roller coaster and dying. I watched it maybe two months ago. And it still plays in my head. Just for whatever reason, this one video. I've seen a million videos of people dying. And they're like, not a big deal. But for whatever reason, this one video has stayed in my head. And it's traumatizing me. And I today, as, as the idea fucking went into my head again today, this morning. I thought to myself, when someone films this. When someone catches a death on camera. What? What, what bone? Like, what gene is it? What? What is it in their, in their genetic makeup that makes them want to post it online? And in my case, it was a fucking like 15-year-old kid dying, body exploding. And I'm like, what would make you, after filming this, put it on TikTok or Twitter or Instagram? What would make you want to do that? Like, save the video, give it to the police or give it to the insurance or give it to somebody who it can help, but the idea, I don't know, it's just fucking, it's gnarly to me that they do this and they send it, they send it to the fucking internet. I remember a video in Vegas of some crazy driver who went off the road when a bunch of people were on the road and he smashed a bunch of people, like pedestrians, smashed them all. Then somebody came through with their camera filming all the dead bodies and body parts that had detached from these people, arms and legs and heads of the felling off these people, and just walk down the street casually filming it. I'm like, what would make you fucking post that on social media so you can get some likes? Now, back in the day, they had faces of death. And what you'd have to do is you'd have to submit your thing via the mail, and you'd get paid. You'd get paid money. I'm not going to like ju justify it by saying, like, okay, it's okay to do for money, but... Back in the day, like, you got paid for it. T today, you don't even get paid for it. All you do is just is freak people out. And then, you know, like, th that, that kid had a family. And then, you know, you get people making memes about it or giggling at it online. And if, if it's a kid, it's even worse. So we don't, we don't have any logical explanations in here. Uh, Jeannie just says some people are just fucked up. I guess, but I think... I think the people that film this, I don't think they initially are fucked up. I think they're just filming, they're just at the carnival filming a ride, and then they just happen to catch a death. They're like, oh. Like, they weren't, they weren't filming hoping that someone died. You know, it's different than, than the guy filming the dead bodies on the side of the road. This is a person who just happened to catch it and went, you know what? This is going on Instagram. Like, they, they made the decision. It must just be for the views and the likes, man. It it's blows my fucking mind. But yeah, if anyone's watching this on YouTube, I would love to hear your theory as to why why people are like that. I Then I thought to myself, what if it was me? What would I do? Now that I've had this conversation, I'd probably take the high road. 
you know, now that I've had this conversation publicly, but I wonder, you know what I mean? What's like, I feel like there's a difference between someone dying and someone getting knocked out. You know, uh, before we did the podcast today, we watched a video of a hockey fan just like blindly getting sucker punched, boom, getting knocked out. His head hits the ground super hard and he gets completely knocked out, doesn't even see the punch coming. And I say to myself, you know what? I I can see that going online. Yeah, that shirt's terrible. This guy might have some brain damage, you know. Maybe he was innocent and got punched. But I can see, like, the appeal of that going online, you know. And even the memes about that. Like, somebody got hurt, but they're not dead and they're not a child. So I can kind of see that. But the other thing, I cannot I cannot figure out the uh, the reasoning behind it. But, yeah, I guess it might just be as simple as people are fucked up. Something else that I randomly thought of today is uh, this might this might predate a lot of you guys, but when the internet first came out, websites looked completely different. And I want to like compare this to MySpace. Some of you might remember MySpace. You go into your MySpace, there's a million fucking links everywhere, a bunch of stupid ass comments, uh, pictures everywhere, the background's fucking wiggling, music starts playing. That's how professional websites used to be. You'd go to like a real website from a real company, like a Fortune 500 company, and on the left and the right of their logo, it'd be like a dancing baby. And then it would play like the Mortal Kombat theme in like MIDI form. So it's just like, it's just these weird synthetic noises like, (laughs) and you're just like, "Uh, yeah, sure, I'd like to book a flight. (laughs) Like... (laughs) Websites used to be so unprofessional and now everything's kind of gone like minimal and everything they want everything to be easy to find but back in the day websites were so fucking weird and uh, I, I wish we could bring that back <laughs> you go to like uh, I don't know what's what's a preview to walmart.com it's a bright pink bright pink background with like with like two two like images of like flames spinning and it's just like what is going on right now? But now you go to Walmart, it's it's just an e-commerce website, you know what I mean? It's just like, okay, okay you want to buy something, I want to find out where I'm at. But these these free website builders and shit, it's like, yeah, you know what? It would make this, you know what would make uh, <laughs> TacoBell.com? And it's like, a, it's a chihuahua just saying, you can't a Taco Bell, you can't a Taco Bell, you can't a Taco Bell, and you can't fuck, you can't stop it. There's no pause button. There's no nothing. <laughs> It's, you, you just, you're just looking at the menu and you just have to hear that thousands of times on loop. Websites used to be really funny, man. I used to have a website uh, called trayflip.tk. And when you went to this website, it played a video of me and my friend skating with like the super loud, super loud uh, Viva Las Vegas song. But it was Viva Las Vegas by, uh, I don't think it was Elvis. I think it was like Dead Kennedys. And it would just play this fucking song. And you couldn't skip it. You had to watch this weird, like, Flash video. Oh, man. There's some really funny ones out there, dude. Some funny ones out there that you guys probably wouldn't believe. So, that's my topic on old websites. Final topic before I... I'm having a shit attack right now, but I'm going to hold the shit in my body because we only have about 10 more minutes left in this podcast, but I really extremely have to shit right now. I put a video up yesterday of me doing a no-comply on flat ground. And then I pan the camera to my face and I say, happy pride month. And I'll give it to you. Less people were mad than I thought would be mad. But there were, there were not no mad people. And the reason is because many, many years ago, I referred to the no comply as the gay comply. Uh, because I think, it's, I think it's an easy trick that people overdo. That has nothing to do with the gay community. Has nothing to do with anything gay related. It's just like a it's just a sharp word to use. The gay comply. It's a funny joke. Okay. It's it's not it's not me trying to take away gay rights. Okay. Me saying gay comply doesn't mean I want all gays to die immediately. Okay. Can we establish that? Cool. Well, I haven't used that phrase in many years. So today it was a, it was a short throwback to doing a no comply, and I said Happy Pride Month. Oh. There was certainly some mad people. Some comments got deleted. I didn't respond to anyone. I really have to shit right now. Ah, you know what? <laughs> I'm back, dude. I had to do it. Uh, I don't even remember what we were talking about. Um, I'm not a fucking homophobe, and people are easily offended. 
I really thought I could make it, dude. Also, I want to explain something to you guys. Try your hardest not to combine salads and Cheetos. Because the next day, it's about to get fucking weird. Um, I feel much better. I feel like I can jump higher now. I lost three pounds right now in the course of only a couple minutes. And yes, as someone said in the chat, this is why I have to edit these podcasts. Not only because I, uh, I stutter sometimes, but also because sometimes in the middle of the fucking podcast, I have to, I get, I de- it's a shit attack. Yeah, I've told you guys I'm, I'm vulnerable to shit attacks. There's a whole video of me shitting my pants in the fucking sewers of Las Vegas. It's, it's censored. It's a censored version. But somewhere out there, at least once a year, somewhere out there, there's a wild, wild ninja poop that needs to be taken, and there's no other options. What was I fucking topic about? I said Happy Pride Month, and people turned it into a big thing, like, oh, I'm a fucking anti-gay. Okay, cool, man. It's a no-comply, and I said Happy Pride Month. And now, for anyone out there who's currently in my chat or watching on YouTube, I really do hope you have a Happy Pride Month if you're part of the uh, LGBTQ plus community i feel like i left one out left out a letter i only i see i don't i think i don't have enough friends that fit all those other letters but there's nothing i can do i just didn't happen to become friends with them i got a bunch of gay friends but what what about those other letters i don't have many of those friends so um oh scrambles lgbtqia plus i think i missed the i which i'm not i'm not sure what the i is but i'm sure someone will correct me anyways that's it for the podcast today hope you guys enjoyed it if you tuned in late you can always watch the rerun on youtube podbean and itunes on sundays they come out on sundays just in time for you to maybe listen to it on the way to work on your monday drive or whatever if you want to tune in live feel free to do that twitch.tv slash ninja lifestyle every single friday right around 3 30 p.m pacific time and also We upload other videos here on Twitch. We don't upload them. I stream live. I play video games. We drink beer on like Tuesdays usually. Or wait, what is it, Tuesdays? No, we drink beer on, uh, what's our drinking night? Sundays? I don't remember. We, We drink, we drink, we watch YouTube videos. We learn how to cook. We make sausages. We sausage each other. Uh, Mario Brothers, uh, tried to play Super Ghouls and Ghosts yesterday. And my God, that game is fucking hard. Anyways, I appreciate you guys all being here. That's it for the podcast. Stay tuned for the post show because I'm not going anywhere. And um, I don't know. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Go out there. Be safe. Shout out to Paul Miranda by Bitcoin, Sharky, Genie, Scrambles, and Day, Day, Day. As I always say, guys, uh, have a great weekend. Don't drink too much and don't drink too little. Also, tell a friend about the podcast and send me money now. Don't wait. Send it now.